what I'm going to do now is to basically construct something called the ASAP and then the ALAP schedule. Okay. So ASAP is a term that, you know, most of you must have heard at some point or other, right? And essentially it stands for just this as soon as possible, right? So in the context of scheduling, what does it mean? It basically says, look, I have this complicated looking data flow graph. If I do not put a limit on the amount of hardware that you can use, right? Okay. How fast can you get the, all the operations done? Okay. So remember that constraint. I'm saying that I'm not putting any constraint on uh, how much hardware you can use. Okay. So now if I look at this and I say, what, what are the earliest operations that can be done, right? You will see that during step or time instant zero. So once again, you know, coming back to the question that was raised earlier with respect to the previous graph, please note that time flows downwards. Right, so 0, 1, 2, 3, the number, the time steps are increasing downwards. Okay, and in time step number 0, what are all the operations that can be performed? Go back and look at this diagram. I basically find that, you know, what does M1 depend on? It depends on C1 and X. C1 is a constant. X is something coming in from outside for this iteration of the uh, loop. Okay, similarly, u is coming from outside, dx is a constant, c2 is a constant, y is coming from outside, dx is a constant, right? So based on this, you can sort of see that m1, m2, m4, essentially all the operations at the top of the chart over here are ready to execute. They have all their inputs available and can go ahead now, okay? But m3 on the other hand, for example, cannot. Until I have finished M1 and M2, I cannot do M3, right? This is straightforward dependency analysis, right? Fairly common sense step. So M1, M2, M4, M6, and A4 are all ready to execute at time zero. Okay. All the, remember the type of hardware that I was talking about? Multiplications with the, uh, finish within one clock cycle. Addition also finishes within one clock cycle. Okay. Which means that in time instant one, M3, M5, A3, A5 are all ready to execute. Okay, and I can basically schedule all of them at time instant one. Okay, this is the as soon as possible. This is the earliest possible time instant when they could have been scheduled. After that, what do I have? I have A1, right? So even though M5 has completed, right? A2 cannot execute because it depends on both A1 as well as M5, right? And finally, in time step 3, I find that A2 is now ready to execute because both M5 and A1, its dependencies, right, have been satisfied. Okay. So this essentially constitutes what we would call the as soon as possible schedule. Okay. And the question that we can ask is, how much hardware do I require in order to implement something like this? Okay. Remember, I mean, the way that I've constructed this is I've literally said every operation is to be done as early as possible. Okay. And if I say that every operation one needs to be done as early as possible, the question becomes how much hardware do I need in order to achieve this, this exact ASAP schedule. Okay. And the answer is, you know, I can pretty much read it off line by line. Over here, how many multiplications do I need? Four. Right. And I need one adder. Okay. On the second line or second time step, I need two multiplications and two additions. Right. On the third time step, I need zero multiplications, one addition. And on the fourth time step, that is t equal to three, once again, zero multiplications, one addition. Okay. So what's the hardware requirement that I have over here? I essentially do max across the columns, right? I need four multipliers, two adders. 
okay so what is this telling me that if i wanted to sh- schedule everything by using the as soon as possible schedule right then i would need four multipliers and two adders okay now let's do the computation of what would the hardware utilization efficiency be for something like this right so the hardware utilization efficiency if i look at it for the multipliers right the total number of multiplications divided by the number of operations possible right what is the total number of multiplications this is 6 whereas the number of possible multiplications is 4 units into 4 time steps right because i have four multiplier hardware units right that's what i came up with this max value this four multiplier hardware units and i have scheduled across four time steps so in principle how many multiplications could i have done in the time that i have available 4 into 4 16 okay so in other words the hardware utilization efficiency becomes 6 by 16 into 100% which is you know something around 40% or so right less than 40% right maybe some 37% or something like that right so what does this mean it basically means that yes i can achieve so now you see the connection with the critical path right this was also equal to the critical path right why was that because m1 m3 a1 a2 have to happen one after the other similarly m2 m3 a1 a2 also have to have to happen one after the other right so the first thing that i can observe over here is there is no way that i could have done this in less than four time steps because the critical path was equal to four time steps sir one question yeah. Yeah. we can we can do this computation m4 and m6 in time stamp one also sir, instead of correct zero. yeah 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 no so so that's the point right i mean i am talking right now about a situation where i do everything as soon as possible okay. without any limit on hardware okay so what you said we will get to next when i actually start putting a hardware constraint right so why is this asap schedule useful i mean clearly as you pointed out right i mean i could have done m4 and m6 later there was no real need to you know try and do everything in step 1 right so and if i you know uh, because of the fact that i put m4 and m6 in step 1 is why i have ended up with this constraint saying that you know everything has to finish within uh, i mean or rather i need four hardware units and therefore i end up with only 37% utilization efficiency clearly if i had you know tried pushing let's say even just m6 into the next step i would have used three hardware units which means i would have got at least 50% hardware utilization okay yeah? so the question is is this the best that i could do right or could i have done better clearly asap is not trying to say you know i'm trying to optimize hardware in any way it is looking purely from the point of view of time what is the minimum amount of time within which you can finish something okay the next thing is as late as possible right so similarly alap is also one of these uh, you know it's a sort of toy schedule right no one would actually use alap in practice but asap and alap are both useful because they give you bounds on how early or how late an operation can be done and whether it should be done at that point or not is a different question okay and the idea of as late as possible right i usually i like to explain this by saying that this is typically how human beings work right you first see the deadline and then you start working backwards from the deadline right you know that something has to be done on uh, some date so you first say okay if i need to finish this by this date then working backwards from there i need to start i need to have finished something else at least like two days before that and so on right so intuitively it's very easy to understand and of course it's also easy to compute right in our case right going back to the data flow graph right going back to this thing over here let's say that i'm trying to finish everything within four time units okay the one thing that i can say for sure is i mean why am i saying four time units because i know that the critical path is four and therefore i cannot finish in less than four time units okay 
Could I have taken more than four time units? Yes, that is possible. And in fact, I'll show you what happens if you allow more than five or four time steps for the ALAP schedule. But for the time being, let's say that, you know, we are still sticking with the same thing. Critical path is four. I cannot go less than four. So with four time steps, what is the latest time at which I can execute everything? The first thing I can see is I go and look at this A2, right? Clearly, this has to happen in step three because it can't happen any later than that or I would be violating my requirement. But the interesting thing is A3 and A5 can also be done in step three or time step, or time step three, right? Without violating any time constraint. So if I go forward and see that, I will essentially find that A2, A3 and A5 can all be done in time step 3. Move backwards one step. What, what did A2 depend on? A1 and M5. Okay, Which means that both A1 and M5 have, must have completed in time step 2. Okay, So this is basically 0, 1, 2, 3. A1 and M5 need to have finished in time step 2 so that A2 can be done in time step 3. Similarly, M6 must be in time step 2 so that A3 can happen in step 3 and so on. Okay. Further back, M4 and M3 need to be in step 1 and move all the way back M1 and M2 in step 0, in time step 0. Okay. So in other words, if you look at this diagram, you will see that M1 and M2 you know, still need to happen in time step 0. Right. And why? Because that is the critical path, right? The critical path, in other words, in this case, is pretty much telling you that, look, these things cannot be moved around at all, okay? Now, what I've done is I've drawn in green over here the ASAP scheduling instance, right? So as you can see, the M4 and M5, for example, would have happened in 0 and 1, M6 and A3 would have happened in 0 and 1 and so on, okay? So you can see that as far as the critical path operations are concerned, their ASAP and ALAP remain exactly the same, right? But for all the other operations, there is some amount of slack that comes in, right? So what is the slack? Essentially what it's saying is, if I look at M4, for example, it could either be in step zero or step one, right? And similarly, M5 could either be in step one or in step two. Now, are there constraints? I can't obviously, you know, there, there, there are some constraints still over here. For example, M4 and M5 cannot both be put into step one, right? So it's not that I can satisfy both the ASAP and ALAP at the same time. But the point over here is there is some flexibility in where M4 could be scheduled, right? So this comes back to the question you raised a short while back. M4, M6, etc. could have been pushed into different time steps, right? And this is exactly trying to capture that. How much flexibility do I have, right? And this is usually called by the term slack, right? Another term is that is used sometimes is this word called mobility, right? And they convey exactly the same thing. So a slack of zero essentially means that something is critical. It cannot be moved around at all, right? And uh, in this case, what I would say is that these things have slack of zero, right? This has slack value of one, right? A5, for example, has a slack equal to two, right? Because it has potentially a range of three steps, right? It could be either in one or two or three, but the three minus one, right? The max minus min is essentially equal to two. The range, uh, the how much freedom it has to move around. Okay. Now, this term mobility is slightly tricky. Sometimes it is defined in a slightly different way, right? The mobility will sometimes be defined as the ALAP schedule time instant minus ASAP schedule time instant plus one, right? And this typically and actually comes up in the context of something else called force directed scheduling. For now, I don't want you to worry about the exact definition of mobility, whether it is slack plus one or not, right? 
if if at all it comes up in a question in the exam you know i'll make it clear what exactly i mean in the in terms of the definition but in general the what i want you to make sure you understand is the intuitive uh, definition behind it right anything which has a slack of zero is critical it cannot be moved around whereas anything which has a slack greater than zero has some flexibility in terms of when it can be scheduled right which we will try and exploit later now i just wanted to also give an example of what happens in the a lab schedule right where i say that i have more than four time steps to finish that is to say i allow a sort of slightly more relaxed time constraint okay in this case what i'll say is that the a lab would essentially look something like this right these are the a lab operations now what you can see is that basically every single operation over here has some slack right so m1 slack is equal to 2 and a5 slack is equal to 4 okay this is essentially a situation where the amount of time that i am giving you in order to complete all your operations right is something greater than the minimum required in other words it's greater than the critical path okay why would i ever give you something of that sort because sometimes in order to achieve the critical path you might not be able to do it unless you have extra hardware if i give you a constraint on the amount of hardware you are allowed to use you might find that you actually need to you know restrict the uh, uh, or rather you will not be able to meet your critical path timing right either your hardware constraint has to be relaxed or your timing constraint has to be relaxed one of the two okay what this is showing is that as far as alap is concerned right it is always defined with respect to the target ending time interval right so when i'm computing alap i don't really care about the critical path what i do is i first go to the end of the schedule the last possible time instant take all the operations that have to finish then and put them there right and then work backwards from there right and in that way i can basically compute the slack that i have available for any operation in this schedule 